whilst legacy software support might be a bit of a mess on Linux, legacy hardware support, however, that is a whole nother matter. Now, in the Windows line, yes, Windows 11 is very extreme in the kinds of hardware you can use. Hardware that is only a couple of years old? Basically out of the question, at least in the case of official full support. But even going back to Windows 10, which had a lot more reasonable requirements, Linux, it's not only reasonable, it's completely unreasonable the kinds of hardware that actually can be used on Linux. Theoretically used at least. The Linux kernel will load on them. But all of the other pieces you might need, all of the out of tree drivers you might need, all of the software you might need to be supported on that hardware, that's a whole nother question. And most distros have gone and said, it's not really worth supporting hardware that's, you know, 30 years old, even though it technically will work with the kernel, because frankly, who's actually running a modern kernel on this hardware anyway? Most distros out there got rid of the support a long time ago, with Debian being one of the very last 32-bit holdouts. There are still some others out there, but for the most part, they are sort of specialized distros or distros that really care about really old hardware. Now, back in 1985, we saw the release of the Intel 386, otherwise known as the 8386, later renamed to the i386. This was an incredibly popular CPU that you will still see use in industry today because it was so popular that Intel kept producing it until 2007. A CPU from 1985, there was so much industry use, they just kept making it. And even after they stopped making it, there were plenty of clones available, and it's still in use today. Unless we're talking about the Linux kernel, where back in 2012, support for it was dropped. Because, yes... It still worked with the kernel at the time. And yes, that was only five years after Intel stopped producing it. At the same time though, it is a CPU from 1985 and a kernel from 2012. The kernel was a lot bigger since then and anyone using the CPU with Linux wasn't exactly doing so with a modern kernel. Now, there were various models and SKUs of the i386, but the direct sequel to it was the i486 that was released in 1989. Now, back in 2022, Linux kernel may drop i486 support as Torvalds backs Pentium plan. This was originally what was going to happen, and at the time, I made a video on this. Uh, at the time, I also didn't have the lights in the background, and the video looked very, very different. I don't know what I was doing back then. Uh, I was skinnier, though, which I need to work on. Um, the plan was to drop it back then, and it seemed like everything was in line for that to happen. With Linus saying at the time, we got rid of i386 support back in 2012, maybe it's time to get rid of i486 in 2022. I don't know why it didn't happen. It didn't seem like the conversation had turned south. It didn't seem like anyone had a good reason to keep it around. So, not sure why we're here now, but um... Here we go again. Sent in by Ingo Molnar, remove support for TSC less and CX8 less CPUs. In the x86 architecture, we have various complicated hardware emulation facilities on x86 32 to support ancient 32 bit CPUs that very, very few people are using with modern kernels. This is the key point because a lot of people are using them in industry to control some random ARM, um, things like that. But this is not hardware that anybody's like, daily driving, or anybody's like using modern software on, this compatibility glue is sometimes even causing problems that people spend time to resolve, which time can be spent on other things. As Linus recently remarked, I get the feeling that it's time to leave i486 support behind, which he wanted to do like 
three years ago. There's zero real reason for anybody to waste one second development effort on this kind of issue. This series increases minimum kernel support features to include TSC and CX8 hardware support, which removes 486 and derivative support and early 586 and derivative support. 586 came a little bit later. I586, otherwise known as Pentium. So we're talking early Pentium chips, the ones later in the line towards 1999, those would still be supported, but at some point are probably on the chopping block as well. Now, here's the thing. This is hardware at the latest from mid to late 90s. So this isn't something that is a hyper controversial change, right? This is not a we're bringing a new language into the kernel or anything like that. There are certainly a number of Okay, getting past all of the changes, there are certainly a number of comments here, but most of the comments are just, hey, here's some issue with the patch set, here's something good add to the patch set, here's something you might have missed that probably should be added, so we don't have to do this all again. Totally all fair stuff. However, there is one subthread in here that is very interesting, because we found the one user of this hardware on modern kernels. In regards to the support being dropped, for what it's worth, I'm not happy about that at the very least, because this will prevent me from using my 486 box for EISA DEF XX drive maintenance. What exactly is the problem with 486? I know the lack of TSC has security implications, but I don't use the machine in a way for which it'll be an issue, and I don't expect anyone doing otherwise. We have non-x86 platforms that lack a high resolution timer, and nobody's going to drop them. We also have platforms that lack atomics, let alone double precision ones, and they're fine too. So why is x86 different? In response to that, why is x86 different? Because it is a tightly integrated platform with code shared around a very large number of generations without silly embedded nonsense hacks. I think if you have a use case, you need to speak up about it rather than for people to guess. Now, as made clear from the prior message, what they were working on was drivers for some really old, really ancient hardware. To that, someone says, Dunno, I'd concentrate my efforts on something a little bit more modern. At some point, this is old, rusty hardware, no matter from which way you look at it, and it might as well be left to rest in its sunset days. This isn't like a laptop from 2010, right? This is, in some cases, going on 30 plus year old hardware. But I certainly am not trying to tell you what to do with your time. What I have a problem with is wasting my time maintaining old ancient hardware, which is not worth the electricity it needs to run, especially if you can get something orders of magnitudes better in any aspect you can think of and actually get some real work done. Real work? I find engineering challenges enjoyable regardless of the age of the hardware involved, and I don't want to take away anyone's daily bread, including mine, by spending my free time on a project someone might have commercial interest in and should pay for. An obsolete platform is ideal for this purpose, and what's better and what's not is subjective. I don't find all the new stuff better, just as I don't find all the old stuff. At least the old gear tends to be sturdy, and likely won't suffer from electro-migration in a few years' time. It can be easy to repair too, if a component does fail. Now, we have talked a lot about kernel crashouts recently, but this is the normal kind of disagreement that exists in the kernel. Adults having a back and forth, saying, okay, I don't think this is worth anyone's time, I think it's worth my time, I'm gonna do it anyway, okay, that's fine, go about your day. Like that, that's like the normal disagreement you see in basically every thread. Also, he got some benefit out of it because this is a project that actually does have some value, but not necessarily in the kernel tree itself, and it still makes sense to host on the kernel infrastructure. Turns out he was having issues actually getting a kernel account, which Linus thought was weird, especially because this person has been involved in the kernel like since the start and their email account is older than the kernel. So they shouldn't have any issue getting a kernel.org account. Uh, basically all that got sorted out and the project can exist just as an out of tree thing. Now, because there were some issues with the patch set, there was a V2 version made as well, with some minor changes fixing things up. 
But because the whole conversation happened in the prior thread, there is uh, literally nothing to really say here. So maybe there'll be like a V3 version just on like one little comment being made. But it seems like this time it is actually going to go through. Again, so we're on the same page. The i486 released in 1989, and early i586 or Pentium is 1993 up to 1999. This is not new hardware. This is not hardware that anybody's like daily driving in most cases, unless you're doing some like weird hardware specific stuff and if you are doing that in a lot of cases you're probably not running a modern kernel anyway because you're probably not running modern software on it you just have a thing that is deployed out there and it kind of just works as is so is this a change that really needed to happen doesn't seem like it but at the same time if it is causing any level of issue and nobody besides like one or two people are really being affected by it at some point, you have to say, okay, is the amount of effort to keep this around, which is fairly minimal, worth it for the fairly minimal number of people? And at least at this stage, it seems like the answer to that is it's probably time to do away with it. But what do you think? I know I have some older members of my audience, so maybe some of you actually have made use of this hardware when it was like new hardware. I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and I for a, I thought I had a joke there. I don't anymore.